Lots of people will help you try to identify your mission in life. I want to help you today try to identify your shadow mission. Because it has the potential to wreak havoc with your heart and your soul and leave you with a pile of regrets. I've thought and talked about this topic before the shadow mission, but what I want to do today that's a bit different is actually apply it to Samson, who is, I think, really perhaps the poster boy for it. Let me tell you why I first ran across the phrase. Many years ago, I was invited to go to a therapeutic retreat. It was very unusual. I will not describe it. But in one of the sessions, one of the guys was talking about this idea. And he said that, you know, we all have a shadow self. You and I in the fellowship of the withered hand where we face up to our inadequacy and weakness and brokenness and fallenness will recognize that sin as my ego, my selfishness, my clutch, my grasp, whatever forms that will take willingness to do wrong. Just like you have a shadow self, he said, we're all meant to have a mission, to have a purpose in life, to devote our time to do something larger than ourselves. But if we don't do that, our life will devolve into what he called a shadow mission using our time and our energy and our one and only life for something that's not worth it, that is ignoble, that will drag us down. And he said, for example, he said, my shadow mission is to sit around, watch TV, engage in this uh, sexual habit that he used a pretty crude term for while the world goes to hell. And all the guys sitting around that circle laughed nervously and then he said, never forget this. He said, now I'm going to say this one more time. This time when I say it, don't laugh. My shadow mission is to sit around the house and watch TV and engage in this sexual habit while the world goes to hell. And we all were real quiet. And we were very powerfully struck, at least I was, by how easy it is when I know that the world is a place of such great need and matters so much, and I could try to do something to help it in my own little way, how easy it is for me to devote hours and then days and then all kinds of times to my ego, to stuff that when I look back on it, I'll think, why in the world did I give my one and only life to that? So I want to ask you now to begin to think about what is your shadow mission? Come back to that. With Samson, we know what it is. Uh, the book of Judges is such a fascinating book. It's really kind of about the shadow mission of Israel. Israel was made to be set apart for God. God says to Abraham, I will bless you to be a blessing through the whole earth, and that will require becoming a certain kind of person. There was no God understood in the ancient world that cared about goodness and righteousness and care for the orphan and the widow and truth and so the way that this God of Israel did and that people would live in his way mattered so much but Israel didn't just like we don't human beings don't so there's this cycle where they don't obey God they do what's evil and so judgment and suffering comes and then they cry out to God and then graciously he sends a deliverer a judge and they're delivered and then things are okay and they get complacent and then it just keeps going on and it's getting worse and worse by the time we hit Samson the Israelites chapter 13 were delivered into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years that's more than twice as long as they had been subject to oppression and suffering up to this point so there's like a spiral going down and God brings Samson along and we are given his mission from before he is born. He's going to be a Nazarite. These vows will remind him of his dedication to the Lord. And he has this glorious mission. He will take the lead in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Um, very interestingly, in that opening section, this mission is actually delivered to his mom. And she's the one that clarifies it. She is a woman that God elevates at the beginning of his story. But his treatment of women is a deep part of his shadow mission. And by the time he grows up, the first thing we see is Samson went down to Timnah. That little phrase occurs over and over in the account of Samson. He is going down, not just geographically, but spiritually. And he finds a woman uh, 
who is one of the Philistines, who will lead him away from God, who's part of the people that worship a false God, who, I mean, they're kind of the equivalents to Israel of like Nazis that just want to destroy them. And Samson is supposed to be their deliverer. And he just keeps sinking farther and farther and farther, breaks all three of the vows that he was supposed to have as an Ezraite. By the time he's with Delilah, a very, very poignant verse when he tells her about uh, the truth of his background. He says, for I am a Nazarite, a razor has never touched my head. I was dedicated to God from birth. Uh, but he's betrayed everything, dies in a very uh, violent, very ambiguous, there's a victory for Israel in it, but uh, death comes to himself. Really, really sad end. His shadow mission was to use his gifts, his strength, his power to gratify his own Im impulses and appetites rather than to serve God. So now I want to ask you, what is your shadow mission? Very often with a shadow mission, it's not like 180 degrees in the wrong direction. Samson's still fighting the Philistines, but so much of himself, his own anger and impulse stuff is in there. Your shadow mission will just get you off course enough so that you never become the person God wanted you to be. I, I love to communicate and to speak. I started doing that when I was quite young. When I was 12 years old or so, there was an article about me in the newspaper in Rockford where I grew up. That was not terribly surprising. You may know I had three uncles on my mom's side, Hack, Jack, and Mac, true story. And they all worked at the newspaper in Rockford, as did my grandfather, Hack Sr. So in our family, getting in the newspaper, no big deal. But the article about me I had spoken somewhere was, talkative boy wins acclaim. And I'll tell you, uh, I've often had uh, involvement in exercises, trying to figure out what my mission is, often found it hard to summarize. I've known my shadow mission since I was 12 years old. Talkative boy wins a claim. Use whatever gifts I might have to try to make people go th like this. And I, I fought that and fight that my whole life long. Shadow missions are that way. Um, organizations have shadow missions. I served at Menlo Church. Menlo is in the heart of Silicon Valley, close connections with Stanford. Walt Gerber was the senior pastor there before me. And there's a lot of venture capital people, highly educated folks that would go to that church. Walt used to say very tongue in cheek, a successful church for successful people. And God help us, you know, in the fellowship of the withered hand, sometimes churches can just become a successful church for successful people. You know, for Israel, they were blessed to be a blessing, but the shadow mission is, um, I, I would like to be blessed, but I don't want to have to be a blessing. So now I want to ask you to identify what is your shadow mission? If you do not pursue the purpose, the path that God has for you, you don't have to have some kind of fancy statement about it. You know it is be a blessing to other people. Love other people. Be generous. Use the gifts you have to be helpful to others. If you don't do that, what's going to pull you in the wrong direction? Now, be honest about this. It's interesting. Um, David also had a shadow mission what saved David was he had Nathan. And Nathan came along when David was way down the wrong road. Thou art the man. David, this is you. David came back and went a different direction. Samson had nobody. Samson, by the end of his life, nobody in Israel that we know is connected with him. No prophet is speaking truth to him. It's just Delilah. She's not going to tell him the truth. Who in your life is your Nathan? You know, I, I have a few people in my life where I've asked them, would you help me to identify what my shadow mission is and tell me when I'm going down the wrong road? Would you love me that much? So now I'm asking you, my friend, in the fellowship of the withered hand, what's your shadow mission? Maybe it's money, money for a lot of people. Maybe it's security. Maybe you find yourself comparing yourself to somebody else and think, I got to use my gifts, my uh, attractiveness, my whatever, to outshine that person. Maybe it's just approval. What a dumb thing to live for, but we do. Just try to get more likes. Maybe it's success. 
Maybe it's anger. There's people that just live to try to get even with somebody. Maybe it's be right. You can be right. It's not a bad thing to be right till we start using it to hurt somebody. And now the invitation is uh, today to name that shadow mission. Identify it yourself. If you're not sure, ask God. If you're not sure and you're brave, ask somebody else who knows you really well. What's my shadow mission? And then bring it to the foot of the cross because Jesus knows all about shadow missions. I believe that this is true. I believe that Jesus, who fully became a human being, had a shadow mission himself. And we see it running through his life. The beginning of his ministry goes into the wilderness and the tempter says to him, turn these stones into bread. Uh, you can be the Messiah. You don't have to be hungry. Cast yourself down from the pinnacle. You're the Messiah. You, you don't have to get hurt. Bow down and receive all the kingdoms of the world. You're the Messiah. You can have adulation. You don't have anybody opposing you. You don't have to be an enemy of the state. And then a little later on, on the Mount of Transfiguration, when Peter tells him what his true identity is, Jesus says, yes, and I'm going to have to go to the cross. I'm going to have to suffer many things. He says, no, 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 not you. You're the Messiah. You don't have to suffer. Remember Jesus' response? Get behind me, Satan. He knows where this temptation is coming from. And he wrestles with it deeply all the way to the Garden of Gethsemane, right before the very end, where he says to his father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. See, I think, his sh I think Jesus' shadow mission was, you can be the Messiah without suffering. I don't know why, for some reason, suffering is at the heart of everything, including the redemption of you and me. And every shadow mission finds its defeat in the shadow of the cross. In that shadow, the light of the world shines. So, your job today is to get really honest, best you can tell. Name your shadow mission and then tell one other person about it so that its power over you can be broken a little bit. You can do this. You can do this. Stretch out your hand. Hey, thanks for joining us. My name's Tim and I'm a part of the team here at Become New. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos from John. And you might like to know that John has hundreds more videos just like this one at our website, becomenew.com. You can go to the library there and browse and find something that might speak to you right now. You can also sign up for the email that goes along with each video there or to receive a text alert whenever a new video is released. We wanted to let you know too that John's releasing a new book this February titled Steps and we're really excited about it. You can pre-order that book at Amazon if you're interested or if you want to just find out more information, you can do that at becomenew.com slash steps. If you've got a prayer request, there's a group of us that meet each weekday, Monday through Friday, to pray for viewers just like yourself. You can send us that text request at 855-888-0444 or at our email, connect at becomenew.com. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.